Hey there do-it-yourself technicians, teachers and people learning and working from home. Today I want to talk to you about Discord, a collaborative communication tool for voice, video and text and a great way to build a community. Discord's been around since 2015 but has mainly been used by the gaming community until recently. With the COVID-19 pandemic its use has taken off in communication, education and community building. It allows groups small and large to get together and chat, be it by text, voice or video. Today I'm going to give you the basics of setting up your account, connecting to a few servers and customising the way Discord works for you. An invitation to a Discord chat will often look something like this. You get a link, click on the link, and I've got an invite. What should everybody call me? Probably not my name, but it's a good start. You fill in all the details and it sends a confirmation link and also gives you an opportunity to download the desktop app. So I'm going to download that at the same time, go back, find the email address, find the email that was sent, verify my email, confirm that I'm actually a human being. Whoa, I am. And now I can go on to Discord. And this is the basic Discord interface. But rather than using that in a web browser, what I want to do is go down here to the version that's been downloaded and open that. One thing I will say about Discord, they have fantastic status messages. Not for any other reason that they're just generally entertaining. Yeah, at this point, we're now running in the Discord app. And we can safely minimize the browser. And now we're in Discord. At the Discord desktop, where we sit at the friends list. And of course, because this is a new account, we don't have any friends. But what we do have is this one server that we've been invited to join. Welcome to the server. Now, one of the things we can do is learn about Discord by exploring the floating quest indicators. So these little exclamation marks pop up around the screen and allow you to move around and find out what's happening in Discord. I'm not going to do that for now. I'm actually in the general chat of the Tech Doctor's test server. It says Mark Snell just slid into the server. So from here I can type Italy. Hello. It says that I said hello. I go over this computer that you can't see. I can reply. So this is a general text chat as you would be familiar with in many other programs dating back to you know the internet relay chat IRC that started sometime in the 80s or even earlier. Text chat is wonderful and a great way to build a community of people interacting, chatting and becoming friends. We can also see the other people that are on the server. So I can see my other self, the tech doctor. I can I have no roles and there's a space here where I can add notes about this person. 
So when you meet a whole bunch of people, you go, oh, I've got to remember that that person it lives in this country or whatever it happens to be. Well, you don't have to remember it in Discord. You can actually keep your own notes that are not seen by the other person. Now, I can send a direct message or I can right click the user for more actions. So in this case, I'm going to right click on there and see the full profile. I can see links to my Facebook page, my Twitter page, and the Tech Doctor YouTube page. We have one mutual server and no mutual friends. So I'm going to send a friend request. My other computer receives that friend request. Accept. And it, I'm now the Tech Doctor's friend. And I can just click outside the window. Now I can also right click on that. I can see any time that they're mentioned in the chat, message them directly. I can call them, add the note. I can even turn them up and down. I can mute them, disable their video, remove them as a friend and block them. All very similar sort of features to what you would find in Skype, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, any of those things. Discord is built around the concept of servers. You have a server for a specific use case, a specific community usually. But within that space, you can actually create different topics. In this case, we only have the single general topic because it's a brand new server that I created yesterday. Only the admin of a server can create new channels. So what I'm going to do is go over to the admin machine and create a new channel. And now that I've spelled it correctly, there's another channel here with a completely separate set of conversations. You might end up with a text channel for random chatter. I might have a separate channel for people to ask questions in and have them answered. I could even break it down into questions about mobile phones, questions about desktop PCs, questions about laptops, and have separate channels for each of those different things. As well as text channels, we have voice channels. So I can join the general voice channel here. Popped up a message saying that the server also has video chat. So I can turn on video to wave hello to each other, stream or show off my pets. I don't keep any pets in my office. We might do that a little bit later. So my voice is connected. And anybody else who is in that voice channel would now be able to hear me. Except there's nobody in there. So I'm going to jump over to the other computer and add them to the voice channel. Now we have the slightly confusing problem of me being in the same channel twice with two laptops, with two computers in the one room. And it doesn't work very well. So what I'm going to do is mute the speakers on the other computer so we don't get a loop back. Okay, now I can talk to you at least without hearing my voice back. Actually, because this is recorded, I'm still hearing my voice back, but I'll work past it. This becomes basically like a phone call between the two users, and it's a great way to communicate if you want to do voice communications. And of course, it's completely free even if you're talking to somebody in another country as long as you've got an internet connection. But the next step up from there is to go to video. At this point, my family were nice enough to get together onto a video call for me. So thanks guys for being there and helping me out. Thank you guys. Bye. Okay, bye. Never to be seen again. All right, I'm leaving forever. The next thing I might want to do is update my own profile. I can set myself as online, idle, do not disturb, or invisible, or set custom status. I've got options around my microphone, my speakers, but my settings are in here. It shows me my account details. I can enable two-factor authentication. I can edit my name. You can have different names, not a problem. I can change my password. I can go in here and change my picture. I saved a bitmoji of myself on the desktop. 
Uh, and that doesn't really fit all that well. But for the purposes, it will actually do reasonably well. And I can click Save. And that's now my profile picture. In this privacy and safety settings, we can automatically scan and delete direct messages you receive that contain explicit media content. So this allows me to set the level of trust that I have in messages and is really great as a parental type control. This controls on who can add me as a friend and a bit about how Discord uses your data. There's different apps that you can authorize to use your Discord settings and you can link different accounts Twitch, YouTube, Steam, Reddit, Facebook. There's a variety of accounts that can log in and use your Discord connections. This is especially relevant because this was originally designed as a game streaming app where you would play the game and use Discord to chat either voice or text with your friends while you were playing. And there's some billing details here which you'll need to set up if you want to pay for any of the upgrade options within Discord. And there's dozens of other menu options there, which are great if you need to customize the app or do something special. If I move my picture up, we can also, when you click on any given message, you have the option to add reactions. Give that a thumbs up. You can quote it in a message of your own. You can mark it as unread to come back to it later. Or you can actually copy a link to that message if you need to show it to somebody else. Obviously, the power of applications like this reside in the community that's there. If you want to add someone to a community, you can invite them, copy that link, and then email it, post it to a website, whatever. By default, those links expire after a day. You can set it to never expire, or there are further options that you can click with the cog down there. On mobile, the system works basically the same. Somebody sends you a link, you click on the link, and it takes you to the App Store. From there, you'll download the Discord app, and then it installs. When you open it, it will ask you to create an account and you put in your name and then your email address and your password. From there, you paste in the original link and it will connect you up to the server that invited you. Once in, you can join the conversation, whether it be by text, voice or video. Where do you find Discord servers? Well, many websites will have a link that will invite you to their Discord server. Or Discord itself has this giant search engine of many, many communities where you can search, find something you're interested in, and join their server. Every server has its own set of rules and regulations, so you need to make sure that you stick with those. What sort of community will you go looking for? Let me know in the comments down below. Maybe we can swap some ideas. Thank you so much for watching. The Tech Doctor is here to help you become your own technician, navigate your technology maze, and especially to help all the different people who are stuck working from home connect with people around the world. There's some older episodes you may not have seen before here and here. And there's a subscribe button down here which will keep you in touch with all the future episodes as they come out. And we release them every weekend. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.